All right, let's find out whether or not that guy shows up around here. Right. Come on, kid, move! I just want to get a bit of target practice in. I don't see what the big deal is. I can't shoot the target with KK in front of it. I might hit her. You know bullets just go through her, right? Yeah, but it's still weird. If it doesn't bother her, I don't see why it should bother you. Why is she so keen to be shot at anyway? She says it's fun. Fun. Different things are fun when you're dead. I mean, I get it on all sides, I guess. To some extent. Kind of. Yeah, still, like, don't make cops shoot children, KK. Cut that out. Hey, KK couldn't stop talking about your little jailbreak last night. Especially the part where you were sneaking around the women's locker room. Hey, I ain't judging. You did what had to be done. Can I see that picture of KK again? Sure. I remember her being green or... Any thoughts on the last mission? Kevin made his choice, and so did you. He'll be fine. $50,000 buys a lot of fine. Can I ask you about KK? She says it's okay, so go ahead. Is she with you all the time? Yep, pretty much all the time. She can't travel very far from me. Maybe a few hundred feet, half a block at most. So I couldn't shake her even if I wanted to. Not that I would. She's good company. So it's not awkward having her around all the time? Nah. Like I said, KK's good company. See? She just made a farting noise with her mouth. Quality entertainment. Free of charge. What about when you have, you know, company over? You don't mince words with the personal questions, do you? I'll tell you this, though. Since I got sober, company hasn't been much of an issue for me. I just haven't wanted to. I couldn't tell you why that is, any more than I could tell you why I hooked up so many times when I was drinking. So having KK around hasn't cramped my style. At least, not in that way. Does she, like, wander off? I guess she can be, like, a, almost a block away, so, like, she probably doesn't, like, wander into the bathroom. It's just the idea of somebody being tied with you all the time. I'm like, there's a lot of other moments where it's like, can you not be right here? <laughs> Let's talk about something else. You got it. What's going on in here? Oh, KK's just messing with Vicky. That's all. I'd stop her, but it's not like I can make KK do anything. Plus, it's nice to see KK mess with someone else for a change. See you around, Logan. You too, KK. Sure. We'll chat later. Vicky glares at KK from across the room. Logan's eyes shift from Vicky to KK. A faint smile betrays his thoughts. So, dragons exist. One day, I might have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a freaking dragon? I see why Mandana was always training so hard. Speaking of Mandana, she's kind of taking a break today. She's in the study, so we're giving her some space. Anyway, what's going on? You said shoot, didn't you? Were you gonna shoot the wall? I feel like fireballs are one thing, but if you're gonna shoot firearms, you should probably set up a disposable target that stops the bullets, as opposed to shooting the actual permanent wall of the building that has a piece of paper on it. I don't, I don't think, I don't think that's a great call. Uh, what's going on here? Oh, Montana said I could use that target for practice. I was thinking of all the bad guys we've seen so far. I figured I should brush up. Training here would be easier than the ranges I usually go to. Too many cops asking me awkward questions. Of course, they also have fewer ghost kids trying to psych me out. So, you know, six of one. Oh, are you going to shoot this target? So KK is less in the direct way and more she's in the line of fire behind it and stuff. Okay. I thought she was talking about this target. Any thoughts on the last mission? I kind of get where Kevin was coming from. Heck, cop family going back a century here. It's who we are. And being the broken link in that chain, it hurts. Hurts like hell. 
It's like a hundred years of Santina's accursed me. So Kevin is angry and bitter. He might not get over it anytime soon, but he'll be okay eventually. Can't relate to that in my own life experience at all. Uh, there's been, there really has not been any family legacy in my lineage. Uh, every generation, I think. I think every single generation, someone just does whatever. Like, all the, everyone does whatever. There's no family business. Like, my dad owns his own business, and it's not a family business. Uh, and he, none of my fa I don't think any of my family has worked for other members of the family long term, or taken up the same job, or had like a heritage or lin uh, lineage to uphold. It's everyone pretty much just goes out and lives. Very different. We'll chat later. Right. Catch you later. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking he might not show up at all if Mandana's supposed to be alone in the other, in the other room. Eli stares into the flickering ball. Oh, hi. Sorry, I was a bit distracted. What's on your mind? Didn't you say that that fire reading's a little hard on your eyes? I wonder if you can develop special glasses that filter out some of the more offensive parts of the light so that you could read more clearly. Like what people use on computers, or those yellow glasses people wear outside and stuff like that. Or both, really. Things like that. Probably help. You might be causing damage to your eyes, which... You live a long time, but I don't know if that means that your eyes are especially resilient. You, and you might be more likely to damage them because of the fact that you live for so long that uh, all sorts of health problems could co crop up. I don't know. Is Mandana doing okay? Yeah, she's hanging in there, just as I am. Any thoughts on our last mission? You know, my kids were around Kevin's age when I left them. They turned out okay, but they at least had each other. Poor Kevin has nobody. Either way, he seems like a smart young man. I'm sure he'll figure it out. I'll leave you to it. Right. See you around. Montana stares into the fire. Her expression is unreadable because she's facing the other direction. <laughs> Ah, you awaken. Eli told me much of what transpired last night. The veil placed on Kevin should hold for at least ten years. By then, the police will have long since given up searching for him. Wait, how does that work? The veil will last ten years. Isn't she gonna go off and start a new life? Is he gonna suddenly, ten years from now, stop looking like the person that everyone else that he meets? We'll, uh... Well, ha I have questions about the veil now. It's it's a convenient thing that explains how I'm able to, to survive in this world, given my story and everything. But it's given only minor explanations each time it comes up. They patch up one little hole here and there about, about its explanation to make it fit whatever's going on in the story at the time, but it's not- we, don't, we have not had a co uh, comprehensive explanation. So I have a lot of questions I don't know the answers to, like... Does the veil only work on people who are supposed to recognize you, for example? Like, if they have a preconceived recognition of you, and then they see you, uh... Does the veil mess up with your face for them? But other- for, but if you- if, if you're somebody who's not supposed to... Uh, recognize that person, then does the veil do nothing? Or is he gonna have, or does he just have a new face for like everyone, no matter who sees him? And then that means that the moment it wears off, all the people that have got grown used to his new face will suddenly see the old face, and so he won't be recognizable as a result. And he'll have to be like, no, it's me, it's Kevin. No, I didn't have plastic surgery. Uh, I wonder, can he come back and get it recharged? Or, well, is there a magic perception filter where everyone will just have the new face override the old face in their memories the moment it wears off. I, 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 I don't know. I see how it solves the police problem, I just don't understand how it works long term. Uh, so how are you holding up? I admit that it has been difficult, but I am managing. Hunting this demon helps. Eli told me that it gets easier, but never quite gets better. Perhaps he thought that was reassuring. Any thoughts on the last mission? 
I am not without sympathy for Kevin's plight, having recently lost a parent myself. But torturing and potentially murdering that innocent creature was a step too far. It was the right choice to refuse him. Did we start the mission? Yes. Eli said he had some information to share. It is time he did so. You look kind of tired, Eli. You okay? I'm fine. Too much fire reading. Takes a lot out of you. Anyway, information about Melkaressa was carefully guarded. Even with fire reading, all I found were fragments. But I did learn a few things. Don't keep us in suspense. Yeah. What are we dealing with here? You said yesterday that it had something to do with knowledge? Yes. Quite literally. From the bits I was able to pick up, the name Melkaressa is synonymous with knowledge. What does that mean? It knows things? What kind of things? It knew about the general's power and how to exploit it. Indeed. It knew just where to strike and who to strike against. Again and again. Only a creature with immense reserves of knowledge could achieve this. What would a spirit of knowledge need with, need with a pocket realm? I don't know. I only found accounts of people who used Melkaressa for information. Nothing about Melkaressa itself. I guess when we find it, we can ask it. Seems like we kind of have the equivalent of the banana demon, a uh, banana dragon, like some sort of knowledge-based spirit coming in. And instead of being a passive person or somebody who doesn't want to be here, a dragon does not is not interested in meddling with our affairs and does not want to be on this planet. Melkaressa is actively meddling, and that's a whole new problem because it knows the secrets. They're supposed to be disinterested. So Melkaressa literally knows everything? It appears to know more than we do for certain. It has a decisive advantage. Knowledge is power? My dad used to say that all the time. A trite phrase, but in this instance, quite true. If Melkaress is so smart, how did it let itself get exercised? It's almost like maybe he's... Maybe it didn't... Or, I don't know. I have no idea if I'm on the right line with that. But I, I had that previous theory about, like, what if he left a foothold in me and it was all, like, a, a an act? Or they're playing along? You're right. It should have known we were there. Should have known how to avoid us. Or stop us. You really think so? I mean, I've taken a few boxing lessons at the gym, but I wouldn't last two seconds in a real ring. Knowing things isn't the same as understanding them. Truly spoken, this Melkaressa is not all-knowing, nor all-powerful. It is important to remember this. That better be the case, because if it's actually all-knowing, we are utterly fucked <laughs> and have no chance of success. Uh, so how do we stop it? I don't really know. In the texts I read, nobody ever mentioned being possessed by Melkaressa. They just talk to it. Talk to it? Yeah. They'd summon it, then ask it questions, usually about dark magic or how to defeat an enemy. And they had to pay in blood. Lots of it. People would die every single time. But Melkaressa was always correct every single time. The cost of knowledge. Okay, so what we have here is the equivalent of like when a... When a a sacrifice spirit, a knowledge spirit, becomes less passive and more low-key, basically, and starts actively meddling with the affairs. Okay. Nobody was ever possessed by Melkarissa before me. I didn't say that. I said there was no record of it. So maybe you're not the first. So, meeting adjourned, I guess? Yes, meeting adjourned. It's not the same when I do it. It's not the same when I do it. All right.
Please talk, please talk, please talk. Oh, I always want to have another talk. Oh, well. Let's see, I want to go to Wall Street, I think, next. I'm thinking bring the office worker and bring the cop. It's probably a fun group to bring along for that kind of run. And then I'll maybe take you two to, Brook to Brooklyn. Yeah. Let's go to Bowling Green, Wall Street. This neighborhood is so darn clean. I know. It's pristine. Everything working like clockwork. I mean, look at it. Not a single pothole or cracked sidewalk tile. How can you trust a place like this? <laughs> it takes work to keep things this well-maintained. You put in the work, you reap the benefits. Yeah, but who's benefiting? Asshole. The city, the country, the world. If you say so. Oh, we we have a dis we have we have some some disagreement in this party, don't we? Okay. Uh. Yeah, this is probably an interesting group to bring along here. I gotta say, the more I play games like this and watch movies and everything, there's some distant part of me that's definitely like vaguely jealous and uh like thinks about the idea of like wanting to move to New York just because have like how. It's got to be just a trip at times, uh, although I'm, I'm sure in New York's case the novelty might wear off, or they don't know, or they, or you lose perspective for how weird it is. It's got to be a trip to have so many video games and books and movies just take place where you live. <laughs> like it's a real weird experience. Uh, that doesn't happen to me. Uh, the only time that my neighborhood shows up in media is when someone's doing something about the Zodiac Killer. Like the movie Zodiac, or that one season of American Horror Story that dealt with that. Suddenly they'd cut to like places that I know, and I'm like, huh, that's weird. But also I'd be like incredibly aware of the fact that the places that they're, that they're filming are not areas around my home at all. Because <laughs> it's clearly like a set or some place in LA that they're just calling uh, like Solano County and stuff like that. And I'm like, what the fuck? Okay. But it's there. Sorry, I'm kind of busy right now. The woman's busy attaching a poster to a wall. How busy, though? I really don't want to talk, okay? I hear you, but... Please, I'm not in the mood. I'm ignoring you. Go away. I'm ignoring you. Go away. All right, Eli, torture. I don't know what I'd say. You throw a fire. I know it's it's a. Uh, I'm joking, obviously. Eli's more relaxed than you've ever seen him. He stands taller. His steps are bouncier. Is it because we're at Wall Street? Is that what's going on? Vicky's expression shows her obvious disdain for the neighborhood. Yeah, that's exactly why I brought these two. Uh, she's a cop, and she's from a different neighborhood of New York entirely, uh, which we saw. And he is in his element, and I wanted to see how these two might bounce off each other here. What's up? Because I pick characters in all in, in these games, I always exclusively pick characters pretty much because of what story stuff I might get out of it, as opposed to whether or not I think they'll be useful, which is not always the best approach. So, you know anything about the Wall Street area? You kidding? This is the financial capital of the country. Maybe the world. This is where it all happens. Right here. In every boardroom of every building, empires rise and fall. Jesus, hyperbole much? It's not hyperbole if it's true. I knew some good people here. Sometimes I wonder what happened to them. These characters so actively contrast each other that <laughs> there's the silhouette around the side of their face from the lighting on their portraits is orange and cyan 
the, which are the two opposite colors that they that the two complementing colors that they always use in like Portal or Michael Bay films and stuff like that, like orange and blue. It's the, that's look at the line on the side of their portraits when they talk, and you'll realize they have opposite colors. Even you seem strangely happy, Eli. Well, I am. This was my old stopping grounds back in my mundane days. I spent half my life here. My firm had dealings with all the major banks. Home Fed, Downey, Gibraltar. Of course, they're all closed now. Guess they couldn't handle it without me. <sighs> Let's get back to it. Right behind you. I'm sure it's nothing and just a coincidence how the colors are opposites of each other. It's most likely that he's orange because he's a fire mage and she's blue because she's a cop. But it's just funny to see even that is in active conflict. Ever come here before? Well, the ferry's nearby, isn't it? Everyone from Staten Island passes through here eventually. Not like I have any other reason to come. The crooks here aren't exactly the kind we cops can touch. Let's keep at it, Vicky. Yeah. They sit in their tower, believing they are giants. That they're too important, too vital to fail. So they walk like giants in the clouds, looking down on us with disgust. Nobody can see the truth. Nobody can see them for what they are. They're thieves, stealing our future, our children. And we let them over and over again. This building, this gleaming glass monolith, it represents all we want to be. But it was built on a foundation of lies and sustained by the gullible. The gullible who sell their souls willingly to a God who doesn't care. They sit in their tower, believing they are giants. I mean, you say nobody knows, nobody can important. see. I think everyone knows. I think everyone's pretty aware of this shit. You're not like uncovering a conspiracy. That's the dark thing, is that it's not a cabal of shadowy people that no one can understand. No, it's something that everyone knows about, and everyone's aware, and we just, we just live with it. Which is somehow worse. The famous Charging Bowl of Wall Street, Monument to Finance. Where's the little girl? There's a little girl further over there across the street or something. I don't know. I've, I've, I've obviously never been here before. I have never been east of Texas in my entire life. And that was only because I had family there. And now they're not there anymore, so I've lost my reason to go to Texas. Are you alright? Alright? Society is being consumed by a terminal poison. We've been robbed and nobody sees it. So no, sir, I am not all right. I am in great pain, as we all are. Somebody talking about uh, economic strife while being lit with purple light. It's a little too real. You're in pain? Try yelling from your diaphragm. It's easier on the throat. Jesus, don't encourage the guy. My throat is fine. It is everyone else that is not. Nobody understands. They don't see. They don't see? You don't mean void touch, do you? He's touched, all right. The only void is the dark emptiness inside the Grant City Trust. They are the cancerous tumor, poisoning society and stealing our future. But nobody sees it. They can't. He's kind of a shallow interpretation of the... of the protest guy, isn't he? He says the, pro he says the most basic stuff, mostly, and... His sign literally just says, look, <laughs> like not, not even like a slogan or anything. He's just like, look at me, attention. Yeah, look at me, I'm yelling. I have a sign that says, look. It's like, it's actually a little weird how nothing the sign is. What are you doing out here? Screaming into the abyss in the hope that someone hears me. Can you hear me? Of course we can. Deaf grandmother's five blocks away can hear you. You hear with your ears, but not your mind. You are asleep. Wake up! 
please. Our future has been taken? Yes. Yes, it has. Taken by us. For the benefit of them, the giants on high. Pity the few who are chosen. They know not why. We are asleep? Yes, because I am the only one awake. Please wake up. Please. Wait, are we asleep though? <laughs> his pleading is... His pleading at the end is so, like, slightly... It's, like, just sincere enough that I'm like, wait a minute, are we all asleep? I'm thinking, like, Leela, you gotta wake up. Wake up, Leela, wake up. And I'm like, wait, 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 are, is this actually... Did we walk into a dream dimension? <laughs> like, I'm taking... Suddenly, I'm, I'm, I'm implied to take it literally because of the game's premise and all that. What is your issue with the, the Grant City Trust? They... They... They are a cancer on society. Taking our future. Taking our lives. You hate bankers. We get it. Don't get so carried away. I mean precisely what I say. You don't mean literal giants, do you? They believe they are giants. Looking down at us from the clouds and calling us losers. But they are the losers. They would be nothing if it weren't for us. Who are those giants again? In the clouds, looking down at us from the clouds and calling us losers. But they are the losers. They would be nothing if it weren't for us. I'm actually inclined to look at the literal clouds as opposed to the, the tall buildings around here. Just, it's funny though, because he could be a complete red herring. He could be just like cleverly hinting that something's going wrong, but he, but he might literally just be a protester in, that's normal life protesting and none of the things could have any double meaning to them but He even says stuff like I mean precisely what I say and it's almost he almost feels like he's restricted in some way and He's pleading for people to wake up, but a little too a little too emphatically and a little too like uh, Emotionally than usual. I Don't understand what you mean. I know I just hoped no this is my cross to bear Bye, we'll leave you to whatever you're doing. Look. The man grips his sign like his life depends on it. He wants us to look at the clouds. The literal clouds, doesn't he? That's why, it's, that's why his sign is so weird and simple. It's just saying, look. There's something he's not, there's like something he can't say, probably. So it's that flat. The famous charging bowl of Wall Street, a monument to finance. Grant City Trust, a financial megacore, dogged by scandal and accusations of underhanded dealings. Oh, we can go inside. Let's go inside. Huh, another ghost. Jesus, uh -huh. listen to me talking about seeing ghosts like it's no big deal. In the grand scheme of things, it's not. Everyone dies. I know that. Thank you very much. I didn't need the reminder. Every single time I see a ghost or a burned document or something, I'm always going to be sad I didn't bring that particular character along. But they're going to be in, like, every zone. So, I, it, you know, it's just part of the experience. There's just a weird ache you get when you see something that's signposted almost like a Metroidvania mechanic. Like, oh, that's the blue door. You need to get that blue, the gun that opens blue doors. That kind of metroid -y stuff. Uh, but then realize that because it's a uh, you uh, one like one and done sort of mission structure that uh, you're kind of permanently missing stuff like that. It's like a weird. It's ha it has that those kind of unlocks and hooks to it, but it's this crazy thing. It's, it's what happens when there's replay value in this genre, I guess. I just get to be psyched about all the things that I do see that I would that I would have missed if not for that, like these two characters going at each other, and you would miss out on that if you brought maximum lore characters. A portrait of an imperious looking old man gazes down at you. Jason Grant. Oh, he's dead. Jason Grant? That's Jason Grant? I don't believe it. You know this guy? Sure I know him. Well, knew him back in the 60s. Jason was just a fresh-faced kid then. He got old. 
And now he's dead. Goodbye forever. This plant could do with some water. Stop taunting me to water plants. Why are you doing this to me? Why 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 are you why are you doing this to me? Stop that. This man seems bored but happy. Hey folks. Wait, are you Robbie Siegel? Uh yeah? Do I know you? You know my dad. You guys used to go boating. No friggin' way. Rick Santina's kid? Vicky? Yep. Hi. Don't you Santina's melt if you leave Staten Island? What are you doing here? Long story, but my friend's got a couple of questions for you. He's on the level, I swear. I'll do my best. What's on your mind? You know Vicky's dad? Know him? I was the best man at his wedding. Ah, oh, damn it, I missed the last anniversary barbecue, didn't I? Yeah, you didn't miss much. Don't worry about it. Next year, I promise. You're open, you're open late. It isn't late in Beijing, or in Australia. Global world of finance. Someone is always working here, which means someone is always at this desk. Can I go in? Sure. Just show me your ID and I'll buzz you right in. I don't have an ID. Can I go in anyway? I shouldn't, but eh, what the hell. Go right ahead. Ignore him. He's so full of shit, Robbie. <laughs> and you talk just like your old man. Don't ever stop. Sorry, I'm just messing with you guys. The late shift gets boring. What can I say? Thanks for your time. See you around. And try anyway? Whoa, sorry. You gotta show me your ID card if you want to get in. Montana, we need a better veil. How do we get the veil to do the whole, like, psychic paper thing? Where you just... I just have a fake ID. All, all for everything, all the time. Psychic paper is great. Oh, Psychic Paper hasn't showed up for a long time, has it? I, I just realized that. I feel like I haven't seen that in, like, seasons. Damn. I like that trick. Looks like a poster for a missing child. Elijah Cook. Age three months. Sex male. Race biracial. Which... Which ones, though? I don't think biracial's a race. Hair. Black. Eyes. Brown. Height. Two feet. Address that place. Missing since May 17th, 2017. Elijah was last seen outside his home at 387 Battery Place. He was allegedly abducted from inside a stroller. He was wearing a tan knit cap and a white onesie. He is half Chinese, half Caucasian. There we go. Please contact the police with any information. Elijah Cook. What if he was abducted so that a dying Wall Street person could gain immortality by inhabiting his body. They're steal they really are stealing our futures. That actually that actually does match up with the guys ranting outside a little bit. They might be doing that kind of thing where the rich people are so rich that they have extra time and never have to die and stuff like that. A little bit of a uh, little bit of get out, a little bit of a uh, the terrible movie with Justin Timberlake called In Time. Same thing. She didn't want to talk to me, but wouldn't she... What if I knew something about the the baby? Wouldn't You, you should want to talk to anyone that comes by, I feel like.